Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support also helps us to continue to share this message of grace, peace, and Christ's righteousness in the finished work of the cross. You can give online at cokerministries.com or you can mail your support to or prayer requests to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed. Well, we're uh, blessed this morning to uh, have a decent crowd here this morning. We're thankful for each one of you that's here. We have some visitors. Sister Kathy has several of her family members with us this morning. We're happy to have them with us. Amen. And, uh, and one of them, I told her several weeks ago, several months ago, I said, Sister Kathy, if that son of yours who's a, a preacher ever, ever comes and is here when we're having church, I said, uh, you let me know and we'll have him preach for it. And so he's here this weekend, and so he's going to preach for us. His name is Curtis, and uh, so we're happy to have him this morning. I think maybe his wife's going to sing a song at the end or something, but whatever they do, it's up to them and the Lord, but I'm just going to ask him to come right ahead and bless you with what the Lord has given him this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you give us to gather together in this your place, the place of our heart. Holy Spirit, you're the great teacher. Yes, Lord. We simply ask that you do what you do best. Open the eyes of our understanding. Lord, bring, to bring to us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who you are. Granted, Lord Jesus. What Jesus really has done to finish the eternal plan that God established before Hallelujah. it began for our benefit. And for your glory. Be our teacher, be our guide. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Uh, and I'm, I'm going to clarify some things right up front. Please don't be offended if I say something that may sound offensible. It's not meant to be. Uh, first of all, I'm going to write off the bat. I believe that prayer is vital. Say Amen. 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 How many people know sometimes prayer takes a while? To yeah. get answered. What we're going to talk about this morning is something that can change your reality. You know what reality is, right? That's the world we live in. Yeah. Something that can change your reality by the time you leave this building that you don't have to wait for. Yeah. Amen. Something, and it's not, it's not I, I'm totally Holy Spirit, I pray in the Holy Spirit, pray, believe in all the gifts of the Spirit. This something is so simple that the church <coughs> usually forgets to talk about it. It's so simple. And I believe it can change your reality today. You don't have to wait for it. It's in your control. You don't yeah. have to wait for God to show up. You don't have to wait for circumstances to change. It's something that God gave us that we can operate within the kingdom of heaven on this earth. And we're going to start with that in Matthew chapter 16. If you turn there with me real quick, Matthew chapter 16. <coughs> Matthew chapter 16. And Jesus is speaking to his disciples. In verse, starting in verse 13, it says, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man am? Now notice what he's saying here is that, What's the information? Say information. information. See, he was asking, What's the information that the world or people that man is passing on about me? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah, uh, one of the prophets. He said, but who do you say that I am? Amen. 
Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. See, the difference here is, he, res he responded from the information received via revelation, not the information passed on by man. Yeah, that's right. And that's one of the problems we have in our theologies that we have, is we have information passed on by certain men, it's just repeated. Right. It's not revelation. Right. And so one of the things, now we're not going to talk about that tonight. Okay, we're not talking about that, but it's in here. And you need to understand that's good stuff. But that's not what we're talking about. So we're not going to talk about it. We're going to go on to the next one. But you need to re realize that. And, I, and then verse 18, he says, I also say to you that you are Peter on this rock. I'll build my church. Now here's something else we're not going to talk about. You realize he's not talking about the church per se like we think it is. Jesus was actually standing at the foot of a 250-foot rock in Caesarea Philippi at the foot of Mount Hermon where the pagan god Pan had been worshipped and was being worshipped at the time. And right next to the temple of Pan, and you can go there today, by the way, and look at it. It's still there. Not that the footing is hard. Right next to that is a cave that goes to the back of this 250-foot rock. And at the bottom of that rock, there's a cave, and that cave is called the Gates of Hell. That's what it's called today. So when we read this and see that Jesus said He's going to build His church upon this rock and the gates of hell will not prevail, He's not necessarily saying of the hell we refer to as down there. He's speaking directly about the, the theology, the information, the way of worship that was going on from the temple of Pan. And Jesus is saying, He's pointing at the 250 foot rock. He's not talking about the Catholic Church. He's not talking about building his church. Do you realize this is the first place church is mentioned in Scripture? It's mentioned in red letters. So it's very important for us to understand that Jesus was establishing his church upon this information that we're going to talk about, but we're not talking about this information we just shared. We're not going to talk about that. Because I bet it's good stuff. You need to know it. But we're not talking about this morning. Let's keep reading. Jesus answered said to him, Blessed are you, Simon of Arjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. We can talk about what it means to be a gate. You know, a gate is not something that's offensive, it's defensive. So what Jesus was saying was that, listen, the church was going to be in an offensive mode against what Satan had established in that region. Yeah. That it's going to be offensive to hell. It was going to be offensive to this religion. In other words, the church was going to pursue, not withdraw, not be defensive. But we're not going to talk about that. Let's keep reading. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, how many people know there's a lot we can talk about with that right there? But guess what? We're not going to talk about that either. You need to understand that. But we are going to talk about what do keys do? We're going to talk about the keys to the kingdom of heaven this morning. Out of all this, all that good stuff we could talk about, we're going to talk about things called keys. Because just, just like in America, we have a certain currency. We have a, uh, a currency, we have a language, we have a, uh, certain things that are allowed, rules and regulations. Every kingdom has a different currency. Every kingdom has different laws. Every kingdom has a different way of life. And the kingdom of heaven is different than the ones around it. Yeah. You need to understand that. You know, in America, if I take a quarter and I, I, I rub off, take a grinder and grind off one side of the quarter, what have I done to that quarter? I've defaced that quarter. The United States government does not recognize that quarter as currency anymore. It's devalued. I've devalued that, that currency. And so it doesn't accept it. You know, and, and just see, grace and faith of the Word of God, the kingdom of heaven has currency. It has a language to speak. It has a way of thinking that's different than the kingdoms around it. Yeah. And I've... You know, it's like grace and faith is a two-sided coin. Mm -hmm. 
It's by grace we've been saved through faith. See, it takes both. Yeah. You just can't have a life of faith, yeah. and you just can't have a life of grace. You have to have grace and faith. You stand in grace and step in faith. Everywhere you step, you're stepping in faith, and you're landing more in grace. They go hand in hand. That's how God made the kingdom to work. And God made the kingdom of heaven with language. See, just because I can... Now, I was raised in the South, and just because I can say, Como esta... Everybody know what language that is? Yeah. Just, just because I can say, Moe Gwen... My favorite one is mucho de negro. <laughs> that doesn't make me Spanish. See, just because you go to church and quote scripture doesn't mean you're a Christian. That's right. right. See, you have to be born again. Yes. You have to learn the language. You have to disciple your you have to bring your old way of living and Thinking into the way of the kingdom way of thinking. Amen. And God gave us keys here. Jesus was giving the church, say the church, church. That's us. Keys to operate with the kingdom of heaven. It gives us a hint what these keys are to do. They bind and they loose. What do keys? Of, uh, I mean, I'm sure this building has several locks and several keys. You know, your maintenance man will have a key to every door. You ever see that? He's got that little ring of keys right here. You know, you go, man. Well, what's it mean when you've got keys? Does it, it just, just, come on, this is Sunday morning, this is new guy, you can, you can talk to me. That's what, what, what's it mean when you have keys? You can open and close, lock and unlock. Yeah, you can open and close the door. You can keep someone out, or you can let somebody in. Yeah, sure. You know, in other words, keys mean you have authority. Mm -hmm. The person's got keys has what? Authority. Yeah. Now, God never gives someone authority if He doesn't give them responsibility. Responsibility and authority go hand in hand. If you've got responsibility, you better have keys. Yeah. And if you have if you have uh, keys, you're going to have authority and responsibility. They go hand in hand together. Right. And so, when Jesus giving us the the church keys to the way the kingdom of heaven operates, I believe there's one what is known master key that can open all the doors. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. It's not all the little keys. We're going to talk about one key called the master key to the kingdom of heaven. And I believe with all my heart, this is what can change your life before you even walk out of this building today. Before you lay your head down on your pillow tonight, you can have a different reality. You can be experiencing life differently with the master key that God gives us in His Word to how to operate within the kingdom of heaven on this earth. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I want to talk about is that, that song was so anointed uh, that we sang here about His name that we could have just sang that just the whole time. That was, that was awesome. But Jesus gave us an idea about His name and in Bible school and seminary when you go there, you learn all kinds of deep things in the Word. And sometimes I think that's what's wrong. Because we skip over the simple. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, there's a prayer that most all of us should know, and this is our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Let's just stop right there. You know, in Bible school, I learned all about Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Mekedes, Jehovah Sidkenu. These are all the different names of God mentioned in the Old Testament that bring Him glory. You know, that describe who He is. But I think in the studying of those things, Pastor, I think we miss some things. How simple the Word of God really is. Let, let, let me see if you catch it this time. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Holy is your name. What was his name that he just called him? Oh, oh. <laughs> when we go to prayer, do we go to prayer to Jehovah Sikkenden, Mekedesh, Jehovah Shalom? Or do we approach our Father? Because that name is holy. Yes. 
to call him Father. Amen. See, it's intimate. Everybody in the Old Covenant, I, I, I looked this up. There's no, there's five places in the Old Testament that refer to the Creator of heaven and earth as Father. The rest of it's all gone. It's all gone. There's only five places. Three of those are prophetic of Jesus' birth and that thereafter. The other two are speaking of God as the Father of the earth, you know, the Creator of everything. But there's no place in the Old Testament while people were under the law where they referred to him as Father. First time Jesus wanted to do it, or did it, they wanted to kill him. That's right. How dare him! See, that, that is the point. Now, I really didn't even talk about that this morning either, but, but Jesus is hanging on the cross. And excuse, I don't know what other verbiage to use when I say this, but on this hand, he said, My God, my God. Why has thou forsaken me? See, he was praying to God and felt forsaken, distant, separated, unworthy. And then he turned, and on the other hand, he said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. Wait a minute. See, over here he prayed out and cried out as the Son of Man, distant, under the law, unforgiven, separated. But over here, he cried out as the Son of God, new covenant, Father. The question is, how do you pray? Do you pray to God? Well, that's okay. But are we following the words of Jesus and praying to the Father? Are we having a relationship through Jesus then versus a relationship through the law? Yeah. Which one is it going to be? But we're not going to talk about that either. Let's see what the Bible says about this. It says in Psalms 100, turn with me real quickly to Psalms 100. Verse 4 says, Enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And enter his courts with? Praise. Right there, if you know anything about Scripture, they literally, because they were under the law, they had a procedure they had to enter the presence of God with. And it started with what? Being thankful. What we're going to talk about this morning is that the master key of the kingdom of heaven is thankfulness. It opens all the doors. It gives you authority. It gives. It, it creates a presence that God welcomes you into His presence with. It puts. See, thank, thankfulness doesn't do God any good. It does you good. That's right. And I'm gonna go beyond that, and I'm gonna say this. It sounds a little. Don't be offended. Repenting. You know what the word repenting means? It means change the way you think. See, repenting doesn't do God any good. It doesn't change God's mind. It changes yours. It changes the way you think about the way God is towards you. It changes the way you think you are. The way God it change, it lets you begin to see yourself the way God sees you according to Son Jesus Christ. That's right. See, repenting moves you, it doesn't move God. His love is unconditional. Right. There's nothing you can do to make him love you more. That's right. For God so loved the world. But this scripture is saying about entering his presence with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Before you even crank it up, you need to be thankful. Look over at, at Psalms 95, verse 2. <laughs> Let us come before his presence with what? Thanksgiving. Now everybody can say this nice and loud. It's, don't, don't worry, it's okay. <laughs> I won't kick you out, that's for sure. It says, let us come before His presence with what? Thanksgiving. Let us shout joyful. Say shout. 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 I tell you what, the church is missing that right there. We need, it has to come out of your mouth. Here, I want to display what most church people do and how they express their thankfulness and their love and their appreciation to God. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to let you know how I feel about my wife, Joy, 
the way most church people do toward God. Okay, I'm going to let you know that I love Joy. I'm thankful for her. That she's the greatest the woman in the world. Okay. Okay, we're done. Did you like that? See, it's a shout. Yeah. It's got to come out of her mouth. That's right. Gotta speak. We got to. We got to speak it. We have to declare it. We have to let other people know right. that we're thankful for our God. Yes. God doesn't need us to do that for Him. He needs us to do that for us. Amen. Man, I tell you what. I, I wasn't going to go there yet. Look, look at Psalms 34. Psalms 34. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. And you know what that is? Which one? That's the next one I read. It's always my favorite. Psalms 34. Verse 1. I'll bless the Lord at what? All the time. How many people know this verse? This chapter. Absolutely. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Not in my thoughts. In my mouth. Mm -hmm. How do I know it's coming out of the mouth? Because I like reading verse 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, or its boast in the Lord. The humble, say the humble, humble. shall hear it and be glad. See, the humble people are hearing what's coming out of your mouth. And what are you, what's coming out of your mouth? The blessings that you have. That you're continually blessing the Lord from your mouth. Amen. I'm going to give you some deep revelation here in a second. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make... And I said her because in the King James, if you have King James, it says the word her. You need to understand this. If this little, for the Bible nerds out here, we need to understand that whenever the Spirit's mentioned in Scripture, it's mentioned in a masculine tense. He the Spirit, the Spirit He. Always referred to like that. And where the soul is mentioned, it's mentioned in the feminine tense. My soul shall make her boast. In the Lord. See, this will make sense in Matthew chapter 13. You have the, the sower, we're not to sow the seed, which is the Word of God. That's the He, the Spirit, sowing the seed. And He sowed it into the soul, the, the, the woman, the, the she. What happens when the seed of the male gets planted and conceives in the female? It brings forth fruit. It's manifested, it grows, something happens. Matter of fact, the first in Matthew 13, the first thing that sprouted from the person that received the seed of the Word of God, joy came forth. It, they were moved by the Word. And the Word being planted. People say, well, how do you know the Word's in your heart? I said, are you happy? How do you know the Word's working? Are you happy? Because if the Word's working in, your, in you, you're yeah. gonna, if you're focused on the Word, you're gonna be, if you're focused on your problem, you're not going to be happy. Which one's winning, the world or the word? Mm -hmm. See, if you're happy, it's going to come out of your mouth. Right. Watch this. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord. Let's see. Okay, let me do it this way. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His what? His name. What's His name? Father. Oh, let us exalt His name together. See, I don't know if you know this about magnification, but I can make my voice louder when it's magnified. Now see, if you magnify something, you can what? Be magnified. So, uh, see, if you magnify something, you make it larger, louder, or what? Mightier. If you demagnify something, you make it quieter, smaller, and less powerful. And there's some people's theology and nomination and the way they think about God that God's not doing what He used to do. Now, is that magnifying God or demagnifying God? That's demagnifying God. Now, how many people believe we're getting close to the end times? Yes. Let me put this way. We're closer than the Apostle Paul was. Yes. Do you think God is going to demagnify Himself? No. The closer he gets to the end times, or magnify himself. I think he wants to show up more often. Amen. But it's not coming out of people's mouth. Mm -hmm. We're not giving thanks. 
Now, I, I love this. I'll bless the Lord at all times. We just read that. This is what I did not learn in, in Bible school. I didn't learn this there. Matter of fact, it was years later, and you think I would have learned it. I learned part of this in grade school. But this is deep revelation. Read chapter, oh, read verse 4. Let me read it for you. I sought the Lord, and He heard me. And what? Delivered me from all my fears. Now wait a minute. It took years for me getting through the deep revelations of God. Which I'm, I'm, I'm jesting, but... To find out the simple revelations. Guess what? Verse 3 comes before verse 4. And you're saying, yeah. That's deep when you really read. When did he seek the Lord? After he magnified his God. Maybe there's a truth here. Maybe before we take our request, we made known unto the Father, we spend some time magnifying Him. Have you ever felt distant and separated and like God just doesn't hear my prayers anymore? Maybe it's because, maybe it's not that God's not there and He's distant. Maybe it's because we haven't spent the time magnifying yeah. Him before we bring our request. This scripture is telling me that he blessed the Lord at all his time. Praise was continuing. People heard about him praising, and he began to magnify God. And then verse four shows up. He got heard him. He knew God heard him because God was now bigger in him. Yeah. See, most of us tell God how big our problem is instead of telling our problem. How big our God is. So maybe we should magnify our God. Yes, amen. Maybe we should talk to our Father and tell Him, thank you. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. I can quote it, but we're going to read it. See, sometimes we just miss the simple things. Because the complex. The complex is good. Don't get me wrong. But, if, you know, if you, if you ever play football, they always practice the basics. The people that forget to do the basics don't play football much longer. <coughs> First Thessalonians chapter 5, starting at verse 16. Rejoice always. Now, in the Greek, this is imperative. And what the imperative means, that means that it's it's really close to thou shalt not. It's like a command for your benefit. It's not something that's dictated out here. It's just for, for your benefit. It says this. Rejoice always. Now, in, in the Greek, this is real difficult. The word always, you really know what always means? Always. It means always. <laughs> You can't mess that one up. I've tried to make it think other things other, other than always. I can't, Pastor. Always means always. It says rejoice always. Now, how natural is it for us to rejoice always? It's not natural. That's why we are told to do it. Because we have to break the system that we were raised with. Uh, yes. And we have to conform. Don't be conformed to this world. We transform by the renewing of the mind to the kingdom of heaven principles. Within, if you want to operate, see, pretty soon it will be natural because you're in the kingdom and you know that. But right now it's not. I, you know, we got Thanksgiving coming up and, and everybody's going to need more ice at Thanksgiving, right? So if, if I go to my, my, my sister-in-law's uh, freezer and I take a, a pitcher of water, I open the freezer, throw the water in there, shut the door real quick, I'm going to come back in the morning and what am I going to have? I'm going to have us. This going to be a mess. It's going to be everywhere. It won't be usable. But if I take that same pitcher of water, put it in a little tray with little dividers in it, and restrict it and constrain it, and bring it under control for a period of time, put it in the freezer, next morning I come back, guess what? i got ice cubes. I can have a party. Amen. 
I can be a refreshing thing to the people around me. I can be a blessing because I was willing to put my life under a period of time of restraint so I can be used. See, we've got to go from being a mess to be discipled so we can be a blessing. See, the reason why most people, you ever know people that, that have a heavy anointing on their life and they don't make it in, in ministry? It's because they don't have the character to contain and hold the anointing because it's heavy. And you have to have character. And God is looking for not these kind of characters, <laughs> but character based on His Word. And that's why the Scripture tells us to rejoice always. Yes. It's not natural, but you're willing to put yourself... See, you're doing what's supernatural instead of what's natural. Look what it says here. Verse 16. <clears throat> it says, Rejoice always. Pray... Without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you, that doesn't mean walk down Walmart aisle, chapter, uh, aisle five and be praying and no. The prayer is to be God conscious in everything. Yeah. To to know that when when you walk out this door, you're God conscious. When you go to eat today, you're when you're at Walmart going down aisle number five, you're conscious that God's with you and you're with Him. Yeah. It's you knowing that you're in a different kingdom and you're bringing that kingdom with you. It's His presence. Yes. It says this, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. And we could get into more of these, but we're getting down to verse 18. And everything give thanks. You ever pray and ask what the will of God is for your life? There it is. Here it is. Yeah. That's how deep it gets. Mm -hmm. Quit asking about whether you're supposed to be a pastor, missionary, what you're supposed to do in life until you get this down. Because this is what builds character. Yes. You go out there and you try to do what God's called you to do and you don't have the character to hold it, it will crush you. And everything, give thanks. Now how can you give thanks in everything? Well, it's not saying give thanks for everything. It's giving thanks in everything. For this is the will of God. Yeah. How can you give thanks in a negative situation? <clears throat> Because you know that your Father has the answer to everything in His Word. Yes, so you start, you don't sit there and cry, Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Oh, God. oh so bad! Oh. No, don't do that. You go to the boss and say, Father, I thank you that in your Word I can find the answer yes. to what I'm going through. That's Father, right. I thank you that uh, you're going to make me a blessing to help somebody else in the time. You know, we need to... Enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. We need to approach the throne. The scripture says in the new covenant, approach the throne of grace boldly in the time of need. See, in the old covenant, they had a process. In the new covenant, you don't. Your family, you have headline privileges. That's right. Servants had to do things just in a certain way. You're not under the law. You're under grace. That's your right. family. You, right. you, you're... You're a child of His. See, you need to understand. Jesus had a, He had a, Jesus had a title, the only begotten Son of God. Can you say Amen? Amen. amen. Do you realize His title has changed? He's not the only begotten Son of God. Now His title is the first of many. That's right, brethren. That's us. Yeah. He's the first of many. That's us. And we have headline privileges. The scripture literally says in the book of Hebrews that we have an altar that those who serve the law don't have the right to go from. And that's the family altar. Man, that's powerful right there. Look, 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 look what it says in Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Now, I like this church because there, oh, there is one. Pastor, you're sneaky. You know I'm talking about, don't you? I said, I like this church church because there's no <coughs> clock in the back. I asked my mom if there's a clock in this in the so I know what time it is. She said no. I'm gonna give away your secret, Patty. <laughs> mom that clock is right there. <laughs> I know what time it is. Philippians chapter four. Verse six. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. By prayer. See right there it says pray. Yeah. And supplication. That's serious prayer. But how is that prayer and supplication supposed to be brought to the Father? With 
and it's there. Yeah. <coughs> See, I believe with all my heart that Thanksgiving is the master key to open you up to the presence Amen. of God. I believe Thanksgiving will open you up to your neighbors. I'll go beyond than that. I believe Thanksgiving is the master key will open you up to the hearts of the family members that you've had a problem with. Yeah. I double dog dare you. you. You can't get worse than a double dog dare factor. The goal of somebody that you've had a problem with this season and you let them hear you speak about them with a voice of thanksgiving. Husbands, you want to have a happy... Remember I said it would change your reality today? You let your wife hear you speak about her behind her back. She's listening anyway, by the way. There's some other man. and let Tell the other man how great she is and how thankful you are. Oh, happy days. Oh, happy days. Fresh biscuit. <laughs> Fresh biscuit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You must be so cool. Oh, no. Anyway, yeah. Let other people hear. I tell you, you start complaining around people and watch people start leaving you. You start being, let other That's people right. hear that you're thankful for other people yeah. and other people gravitate towards you. Yeah. I got scripture for this. But before we get to that scripture, let me show you what happens to people that aren't thankful. Romans chapter 1. Look how simple it is. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven and installed in God and His unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them. Say in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Can you say these people knew God? They knew God. How do I know that? Well, let's just keep reading. Yeah. Because also, although they knew God, these weren't heathens. Mm -hmm. They did not glorify Him as God. Huh? Nor were they thankful. You know what caused the depravity of their mind? But became vain or futile in their thoughts. And their hearts were what? Darkened. Now we're not going to read the rest because you've read this before. They became this way because it was a group of people that chose not to give thanks and magnify God mm -hmm. and give Him glory and recognize His name with their mouth. In Hebrews 13, we're not going to take time to read it for the sake of time, but in Hebrews 13, it talks about the fruit of our lips, giving sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips unto God. Guess what wine is made out of? Wine's made out of fruit. What's the difference between wine and vinegar? Vinegar is just spoiled wine. That's all it is. Maybe the fruit of our lips that we've been given and given unto God, all he has to work with is the rotten fruit we've been given him. Our griping and our complaining, magnifying our situations bigger than him. Yeah. Maybe he has no choice but to pour out vinegar in our life because we haven't been given him good fruit. Yeah. Maybe we should try the sacrifice of praise. Right. Why is it called a sacrifice? 
because it's not normal. It's not natural. It's super natural to give praise in the time of need. To be thankful. And let it come out of your mouth. So here's a group of people in the book of Romans, and you know the rest of the chapter. They could have changed their situation like that. All they had to do was start being thankful. And their reality would have changed immediately. What caused their reality to come like it did? They chose not to be thankful and give glory to God. I know we're not going to be that type of people. We're going to take every opportunity to say thank you to everybody that we know. The cash register at Walmart. The waitress and the waiter that serves you your, your meal at the restaurant. Your husband, your wife, your relatives. You're going to be the most thankful. Why? Because that's the kingdom of heaven on this earth. And if you want to be effective in this world, you've got to start with where the world's at. Yes, I believe in prayer. Yes, I believe in praying in the Holy Ghost. But be thankful. We're out there trying to do these, and we're missing the very fundamental things that build character in our life. One more scripture. Book of Jeremiah. I just showed you what happens to a group of people that aren't thankful. Let's read about a group of people that aren't thankful. Jeremiah chapter 30. Verse 19. Now, if you read the chapter before, the scriptures before this, it's going to show you they were in a bad state of being. <clears throat> and it was speaking to a group of people. But in verse 19, God makes a difference. Then out of them, shall proceed thanks to me. So, there's a group of people that aren't going to, they're, they're under all kind of, they're under oppression. Verse 19 says, then out of them shall proceed say thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Come on church, say thanksgiving. thanksgiving. And a voice of those who make merry I will multiply them. And they shall not diminish. I also glorify them. And they shall not be small. On one hand, you have a group of people that refuse to be thankful. On the other hand, we have a group of people in a no hope situation. But they chose to be thankful. And God said, I'm going to multiply them. They won't diminish. Matter of fact, they won't be small. Next verse. children <coughs> shall be. See, the way that you are today, grandfathers, grandparents, parents, the way you are today, you're preparing your children to be that way in the future. You're the example of how to be in a negative situation. <coughs> word is promising that if you're this way you're going to be an example to your children and your children are going to be this way.
wonderful story of Jonah in the well. How many people just, we, we're not going to, you know the story. How many people know the scripture says he was in the moorings of the earth? That's deep. That's deep theology. That's about as low as you. That's a bad situation. I'm just going to cut the. Here's the whole gist of the whole story in the simplest way I can make it. Jonah was in the belly of the well. They don't teach us in Bible school, by the way. He was going to come out one way or the other. Yeah. There's two ways out of a fish. And one way is a lot smaller than the other, church. A whole lot more pressure coming out that way. Oh, it was the best word he could have heard at the time. But what changed his situation? Because he was coming out. Most of us were just about waiting to come out. That was bad. I should have done that. Scripture says he remembered his God. He gave thanks. if we've got to give thanks in everything, 
then maybe we'll give thanks more than just on Thursday, huh? How many is thankful this morning? Has God been good to you? Yes. He's sure been good to me. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support also helps us to continue to share this message of grace, peace, and Christ's righteousness in the finished work of the cross. You can give online at cokerministries.com or you can mail your support to or prayer requests to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parker's Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed.